So far, the list we've talked through has a lot to do with how we formulate the problem. Right? As we are going through and formulating the problem, we need to make decisions that make the solver's life easier. The final three that we'll talk through are, are things that we can do with the solver itself to try to improve the problem uh, solution speed. So the first thing that, that you can do, and, and this is one where um, it, it doesn't always produce uh, any benefit, but it's something that, to at least think about, is something called the branching direction. And in, in Groby and in other solvers, you can specify sometimes the, the preferred method for how the solver will go about choosing the next node to, uh, to explore. The methods that are available in Groby are basically either you prefer to explore horizontally first, which is sort of a breadth first uh, search, or you can prefer to explore depth-wise. You're trying to drill down as far as you can on the nodes to get to a feasible solution. Um, so you can set this parameter. Again, it doesn't always help, but the, the main idea is that if your choice as you're going through this branch and bound tree uh, is to either, uh, you know, you, you have these two sub-problems. Let's take node two, for example. You have two sub-problems, and you then need to make a decision about, am I going to continue drilling down to the sub-problems and sub-problems from the uh, one particular child node, or do I want to resolve the the upper branches first before making a decision about where to go next. So you can specify that with a parameter called branch dir in Garobi. The value minus one will always explore down first, while the value one uh, for this parameter will always explore the up branch or the, the higher level branches first. So this is one, one way that you can go about trying to tailor the solver's solution method for your problem. The next option is using something called a warm start. One of the big computational expenses for solving models is sometimes finding a feasible solution that works to begin with. So if you know something about your problem where you can determine a feasible solution without actually running the optimization solver, you can provide that initial solution to the model so that it doesn't have to waste time spinning around and finding, uh, finding something that works before moving on. So the way that you actually implement this is, you know, first you have to determine a feasible solution and maybe you use some heuristic or script or some uh, manual process to determine uh, that, that feasible solution and, and find one that's a little bit better than the alternatives. Once you have that, as you're formulating your model, you just go through and when you define your variable, uh, you declare your variable. Here in this example, we see model.y is equal to pyoma.var. So once you have that declaration, you can just go through and assign the known solution to the variable uh, at that point. And then when you're solving the model, you just say results equals solver.solve model, and then you have to pass it the parameter warm start equals true. Garobi will support this type of uh, implementation. Some other solvers don't support it. Like, I don't think CBC supports it. Um, but if you do have a solver that can support warm starts, uh, you can do it in this way by just specifying the variable values in the initial, uh, in the, for the initial iteration. The last part of this is mostly just understanding what we, what we mean when we're talking about pre-solvers or heuristics. Uh, but it's also something that, it, as a, a person formulating the problem, you can spend some time developing. So when we talk about pre-solving, this is another way of reducing the problem complexity. And what we're trying to do is, again, reduce the, the span or the breadth of the problem that we have to explore using the solver. So let's take an example where we have a set of constraints here. We, the constraints are, one, that y1 plus y2 plus y3 is greater than or equal to 10, uh, where y is, uh, these are binary variables, or sorry, in, integer, integer variables. Uh, and the second constraint is that y1 has to be less than or equal to 3, y2 has to be less than or equal to 2, and y3 has to be less than or equal to 5. So if we just look at this set of constraints, you'll notice that there's only one feasible solution to all of, this, all of these uh, four sets of constraints. And that is that y1 is equal to 3, y2 is equal to 2, and y3 is equal to 5. That's the only possible way that all four of these constraints can be satisfied 
using uh, integral variables for y. So in a pre-solver, uh, what you would do is you detect some of these conditions. You detect the, the, the condition where there's sets of constraints that cause certain regions to be entirely excluded, and then you reformulate the problem so that it doesn't require the uh, it doesn't require that the the solver actually um, investigate different integer values that are not in this uh, mutually uh, feasible region. So what it looks like when we actually pre-solve this is these four constraints can be represented simply as three equality constraints, and that is taking the value of the only feasible solution. Let's think about a slightly more complicated example where now instead of y3 is less than or equal to 5, we say y3 is less than, less than or equal to 6. So now what happens? Well, we have a little bit more freedom in choosing the variables in the problem, but we can still eliminate a large, uh, a large region of the problem by looking at this and pre-solving it. So here, the pre-solved version has to account for the fact that y3 can be, say, 5 or 6, y2 could be uh, 1 or 2, y1 could be 2 or 3. And so this new problem uh, can be posed as follows. So we would still need to maintain this y1, y2, y3 greater than or equal to 10 constraint, but the equalities here would actually be uh, inequalities. We have more constraints, but we're exploring a much smaller region of the problem. Pre-solvers do a good job of detecting a lot of these scenarios. And so in Garobi, you can use the pre-solve and heuristics parameters to uh, specify different approaches that the, the solver should take. Uh, here's some of the flags that you can use. The main thing to take away from this is that if you do decide to use uh, an aggressive pre-solver, what that means in practice is it's not like it's going to go through an... Uh, you know, uh, cut out feasible regions of your problem or anything like that. What it means is it's going to run through a longer list of things before you actually begin solving with your branch and bound solver. So practically what that would look like is if I were to set aggressive pre-solve, I'm going to spend more time waiting for the branch and bound solver to start uh, than I would if I used a conservative or turned off pre-solve altogether. So there's a trade-off to be had between the amount of time that it's going to take to pre-solve versus the amount of time that it takes to actually run the branch and bound solver. And at some point, you're not going to you're not going to see any advantage from going to uh, more and more uh, testing on the pre-solves. At some point, it's better to just start solving the problem. Likewise, there's a heuristics uh, in Garobi where you can specify a target fraction of time that you'd like the solver to spend on mixed integer program heuristics. So if I were to say 0.05 as my uh, heuristic uh, parameter, it would target spending about 5% of the total solve time on heuristics to try to reduce the complexity of the problem. So these two are, are really uh, commonly used ways to improve the solution speed. There's equivalence in CBC. Uh, again, the, the parameter names are a little different what the functionality is is a little different, um, but you can turn, you know, do things like turn off the pre-processing if you have concerns of how, you know, what it's doing. Um, you can look at special circumstances where you try to solve out inequality constraints, or maybe you have something called a special ordered set, which is a way of modeling a piecewise linear function. So these uh, different options might apply to different problems. Uh, and then you can also do heuristics. Uh, CBC allows you to specify whether you're doing heuristics before or after the pre-solve, or you can actually do it both ways. If you do it both ways, again, that's going to take longer, and you're going to spend more time waiting for the problem to actually start solving. So this concludes the section on methods for improving model solver efficiency and speed. Um, and it actually concludes the initial set of videos that we have for the linear programming and mixed integer programming tutorials. From this point, you're probably going to uh, need to move on to some kind of a textbook reference to have a, a better or deeper understanding of uh, problem solver techniques, um, methods for imp implementation, uh, using cutting planes more effectively. Uh, but hopefully for now, this will cover most of what you need to get started.